from the three. Cornet. Westside through. That's a five-yard line. He down across the 30 yard line. First the tackle there is good as the 45. Into weather territory to 40. Welcome to the Ram Report with Steve Fairchild. And pass over the middle. Tights wide open. Touchdown, Colorado State. Hi, everybody, and welcome back for another edition of the Ram Report with head coach Steve Fairchild. I'm your host, Brian Roth. Happy to have you back for another edition. A tough loss for Colorado State this past weekend, losing 38-31 at home to San Jose State. And, and Steve, I know those are tough ones, not only when you when you lose in the closing seconds, but when you know you had chances in the contest. Yeah, we had we had plenty of chances. We just, uh, you know, we got off to a slow start on both sides of the ball and uh, dug ourselves a hole, got down 24-7, and... Uh, then started playing and got back into it and uh, took control a little bit there late in the game, but didn't finish it out. So uh, very disappointing loss, but uh, still a lot of football left this season. Yeah, it was a beautiful day out there at St. Olympic Field at Hughes Stadium for homecoming 2011. 12-yard line, moving left to right. Rutley takes the call, left tackle, big hold to five. Dives to the corner of the end zone. He's in for six. Thomas back to throw on first down, going deep, looking for Greenwood. It's caught! It's a touchdown! Balls here this year, let alone touchdowns. Play fake. Thomas going to go back to the air, looking deep. Down the middle of the field, has Coffin at the 30. He stumbled after making the catch. Fourth and two from the Spartan 18 yard line. I set line Thomas to the ground game. Derek Good, he's not going to get it. Here we go. The ball at the 25 to San Jose State. Thomas stepping up in the pocket, as all day, into the end zone. Cut. It's Greenwood, and it's a touchdown for CSU. First and 10 from their own 12. They look to pass on first down, now under pressure, and Buckner will go down back at the 10 yard line. Second down at 8 from the 19. Faulkner, pump fake, going to go deep, and there's Momo Thomas. He has the interception at the 45. He'll reverse fields. Oh, he stepped out of bounds. Thomas, seven-step drop to throw on first down. Steps up, fires deep, looking for Coffin. Got it to 15, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Colorado State. Thomas Kaufman and the Rams go for the kill shot. Thomas go from the gun. Here comes the blitz. Pete now under pressure. Going to roll out to the right side. He'll tuck it under. Pete to the five. Dives into the end zone for a CSU touchdown. First and ten from the Ram 46. Faulkner. He got hit from behind. The ball is loose. And CSU saying they have it. No signal from the officials. The referee will come in and say it's San Jose State football. Faulkner from the gun, takes the snap, steps up in the pocket, hit as he throws, and it's incomplete unless they call it a fumble. They're going to say it was a fumble, and CSU has excellent field position. Be 48 to Lionel Ayan. Not much wind to speak of. Snap is good. DeLine kicks it away. Plenty of distance. It is no good. Well, again, a disappointing end to a, a beautiful afternoon in Fort Collins. And, and Steve, talk a little bit about it at the start of that game. You said you didn't get off to a good start. Uh, can you put your finger on to as why you didn't get to a good start? Well, I, you know, obviously defensively we didn't tackle very well. and We weren't flying around. And, and offensively, you know, our first series we went three and out. So uh, against a team like San Jose State, it gives them life. And, uh, you know, we, we are a good football team when we play with passion and have that edge. And, it's my job to make sure that we show up uh, ready to play like that, and we weren't Saturday. Yeah, sometimes uh, uh, when you go on the road, as you guys did at Utah State, uh, some mistakes by the home team give the visiting team life, which it did in Logan, and I thought kind of the opposite kind of happened to you in the first half. Yeah, no question. Uh, you know, it's a game you'd like to think you'd come out and put together a drive and go down and score and maybe maybe get them out of there a couple times. And uh, But, again, they, you know, credit them. They made some plays. And, and, and even going down the way we did, we still had a chance late in the game on both sides of the ball to close it out and just, just couldn't get it done. Yeah, offensively, I know a lot of the talk had been about the fact that there hadn't been many big plays in that CSU offense through the first four games of the season. But, boy, there was a lot of big plays for the CSU offense on Saturday. Yeah, probably the one bright spot was we took a, a fairly significant step forward in our passing game, particularly uh, getting the ball down the field and chunks of yardage to our wide receivers. So we really did a nice job in that area, and, and it paid off. I mean, we were able to move the ball, but... Uh, 
again, you know, we did, didn't come up good in the running game and, and like I said, didn't tackle very well. And, uh, in the end, we ended up losing that game. Yeah, talk a little bit about the run game because it kind of has been hit and miss. Was it something San Jose State was doing defensively or something different? You know, when you look at it, it's a little bit of everything. You know, teams are stacking uh, the box, so to speak, against us and daring us to throw the football, which now we're able to, you know, take advantage of that a little bit. Uh, you know, we had some assignment errors. We, you know, we didn't enter the run at, at some areas where we'd like to. So a little bit of everything, but we, we've got to be able to do both. That's just the way our offense is, is made. And, uh, you know, we always got to try to come out and establish that physical run game. Yeah, I knew that you knew and the team knew that San Jose State was going to be a quality football team. I'm not sure if fans fully comprehended that, but uh, I thought they were very good. I really liked their running back, Rutley. He was good until he got hurt. Yeah, no, he was a very good player, and, and I knew they were good. You know, they had Nevada beat. Uh, you know, they went in the, uh, the fourth quarter with UCLA tied, so uh, they were a good football team. They had some very good players on that team, but uh, again, a game that we got back into and, and just needed to close out and couldn't do it at the end. Yeah. It was a tough one for the Rams to take. Again, they fall 38-31. Plenty more to come here on the program. When we come back, we'll take you in that CSU locker room. Stay with us. Colorado State season tickets are on sale now. Make your plans to be at Hughes Stadium for every exciting Rams home football game. This year's home schedule includes National Power, Boise State, and Front Range Rivals, Air Force, and Wyoming. Purchase a sideline season ticket and get the Cinch Team Rocky Mountain Showdown game versus CU for no additional charge. Call 1-800-491-RAMS or visit csurams.com. Check out visitftcollins.com for lodging packages and make plans for a Fort Collins weekend. 43,000 CSU Ram alums call Denver home. Now it's easier for Denver Ram fans to stay connected with CSU. CSU is proud to announce the new Colorado State University Denver Center, where Ram alums will feel at home. It's a place to make professional connections, enjoy events with other alumni, and even show your Ram pride with a wide selection of CSU fan gear. Stay connected with CSU, the CSU Denver Center at 17th and Glenarm. Learn more at rams5280.colostate.edu. Twitter is great. Here's one. That darn cat is in the tree again. Where's a seven-footer when I need one? Here, kitty kitty, come on. Heard you're looking for a seven-footer. Wow, Coach Miles, this is crazy. I just tweeted that. Trevor, you got this? Yes, sir. Yeah, he's more of a dog guy. This ought to do the trick. Okay, thanks. That's what we're here for. Go Rams! Welcome back here to the Ram Report with head coach Steve Fairchild. Brian Roth back with you again. A tough loss on Saturday, 38-31. San Jose State gets the win against CSU. And as you can imagine, it was a somber locker room for the Rams. CSU! You have to open things up down the field. No better time than to get that deep passing attack finally up and running than here today. Now going deep, looking for Greenwood. It's caught. It's a touchdown. Can't overlook anyone. Uh, that's the main thing. Uh, I'm not saying we did overlook him, but I don't think we came out with that edge that we need to uh, in order to win games. I mean, it's hard to win a game in Division One college football, and uh, we, we proved that today that, that we didn't step up to the plate and uh, make the right plays. Beat to the five, dives into the end zone for a CSU touchdown. It's heartbreaking, you know, and uh, there's nothing we can do now but prepare for Boise State and uh, take our heads up. Steps up, fires deep, looking for Kaufman. Got it to 15, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Colorado State. We played a good team out there, a team that kept fighting. Um, you know, obviously we think we should have won, um, you know, but they just made one more play than we made. So, I mean, um, you know, we're, we're all disappointed about the loss. Into the end zone, cut. It's Greenwood, and it's a touchdown for CSU. When we came back and tied it, it, it was night and day compared to how it was when we were down. And as a, as a team, I think we need to, even when we're down, we need to
need to have that kind of energy and enthusiasm. We did get on track, offensively, defensively. Like I said, I'll make a few more throws. Uh, this game's not close, we win. Here it is, Sunny Lubick Field at Hughes Stadium in a stunned silence. Final score, 38-31. The Spartans over the Rams. Well, again, a very disappointing field to that uh, Ram locker room. And happy to be joined by quarterback Pete Thomas. And, and Pete, uh, kind of give us a sense of, of the, the attitude, the mindset of the, the players in that locker room following a tough loss. Definitely a sad locker room, uh, 180 degrees uh, from where we were after Utah State. Uh, we feel like we didn't execute and uh, gave away a great opportunity to uh, get the 4-1. Kind of dug ourselves a little hole, but uh, got to come back strong. Yeah, you know, in, in a lot of our post-game interviews that we did uh, on the post-game radio show, uh, several guys said the word flat. Did you guys come out flat? I think we came out flat, uh, and that falls on the player's job. Uh, coach and the staff get, did a great job of uh, preparing us, but uh, us, as, it's on us as players to come out ready with that edge that Coach always talks about. Um, and we didn't come out with that, and it showed uh, first drive on defense and first drive on offense. Yeah, you know, Coach, I had talked in that first segment about that vertical passing game starting to get going. What was the key? What was it? Why was it San Jose State? How did you guys exploit them deep? Uh, I feel like we had a great game plan going into the game. Uh, it all starts with the O-line. Uh, some of those deep balls take, take a lot of protection, a lot of time back there, and the O-line did a great job of uh, blocking up and uh, making sure I had time to find the receivers downfield. The receiver ran some great routes, and... Uh, put the ball where it, where it needed to be, and uh, they just made plays. I think that was the biggest change is uh, we just felt like we needed to make plays in the passing game, and we did. Yeah, talk a little bit about his performance, Steve, because he uh, he was excellent. You look at all the numbers, and they were fantastic, and I thought a lot of his deep balls were right on the money. Yeah, no question. Uh, you know, Pete's got the ability to throw the deep ball, which really opens things up for our offense, but he hit it on the head. You know, the, the offensive line's got to block. The receiver's got to run the route. You know, he's got to read it right and put the ball where it needs to be. It's such a team game when you – uh, try to get the ball down the field, but we did, and, and that's going to really help our offense in the future. Yeah, and one of the things we, we realized with that passing, we really got the wide receivers involved in the game. It wasn't just Joe Brown and Crockett Gilmer. It's Luke Greenwood. Thomas Kaufman had a big game. Yeah, I mean, we've always said this all, I mean, from the start of training camp, we do have some receivers. We don't know if we have that one go-to guy, but uh, we have some receivers that can get separation, get open. Uh, the first three, four games, it just wasn't happening. Uh, but we finally got some confidence uh, in overtime of that uh, Utah State game, and I think it really carried over to the San Jose State game. And uh, I think in turn that's going to help out our run game because teams won't be able to stack the, bo the box against us because we prove that we do have wider receivers that can't get open against one-on-one uh, -on -one coverage. Steve, does a game like that give you a little more confidence in your receiving core and kind of prove probably what you guys have been thinking for a while? Yeah, it does. And, and really what's happened is we – you know, we knew we struggled, and coming out of that CU game, we, we were not very productive at all. But uh, to the kids' credit, I mean, we, we bounced back and had two really good weeks of practice throwing the football. And uh, you could see it out there on the practice field. And, and when you can see it out there, it eventually translates out to the, the playing field on Saturday, and it certainly did against San Jose State. Right, you're going to get a week off now, Pete. What's the uh, plan for you and the team here in the next week before you kind of get into Boise State? Uh, you got to start preparing for Boise State. Uh, they're one of the best teams in the country. Uh, can't take any days off. Uh, if one want to have a chance to beat those guys, real confident coach and his staff to put together a great game plan. Uh, just got to start preparing and uh, get ready for that game. Obviously, they have a fine quarterback in Kellen Moore. Do you, do you take that uh, as, a, as a challenge to you when you go up against a, a national caliber type of guy? Definitely. I remember my junior and senior year in high school watching him uh, in the Fiesta Bowl and and all those big bowl games, so I definitely have a lot of respect for him, and uh, I'm excited to go head-to-head -head against him, and uh, I know our team's excited for the challenge. Uh, welcome to Boise State to the Mountain West. Yep, absolutely. Hey, thanks for joining us. Appreciate thanks it. Me. That's sophomore quarterback Pete Thomas. Plenty more to come here on the Ram Report. When we come back, we'll go back out to an absolutely stunning day at Sunny Lubick Field at U Stadium.